Hello, you're listening to Ready, Set, Go! Real Estate Investing Podcast, presented by Brandon Elliott. This show will be going over all aspects of real estate investing and is intended to educate, motivate, and prepare you to take action on your first or next real estate investment. For more information, please visit BrandonElliottInvestments.com. Thank you for listening and enjoy. Welcome back, everyone, to Ready, Set, Go! Real Estate Investing Podcast. I'm your host, Mr. Brandon Elliott. I'm excited today. We got a brother in the house. We've been in multiple mastermind groups together. I met him originally at one of our mentors' house, Cole Hatter, in a sales training, I think, like years and years ago, and was so impressed, so impressed right from the start meeting this guy that like from the journey of what he's been through, what he's done, what he's accomplished, what he stands for. And he's not like somebody that stays on the fence for anything. And I respect that. I appreciate it. And over the years, as we've joined more multiple mastermind groups and find each other in the same rooms, it's been a pleasure to get to know Dave more and and see what he's been doing in real estate and multiple other business ventures. And it's really exciting. Now he is running a basically a staffing agency to a certain degree of finding your next employee, right? So Team Hired, it's an incredible company that that you definitely want to utilize. But the real estate that he's got as well, just I mean, just in the last few years, $15 million in real estate, nine Airbnb, six commercial buildings. Uh, that's a lot of square footage, a lot of territory that he's taken and couldn't be more proud of it. Also, an incredible event coming up, the Elevate experience, where he's about to break a world record for these kids and make the biggest impact. So yeah, I I can't say enough good things about you, bro. I'm so uh, thankful that that you're taking the time to be here with us. So without further ado, Dave Williams, what's up, man? How are you? Yeah, what's up, brother? Thank you for having me. And just the, the sediment is mutual on everything. Just grateful to be rubbing shoulders with you, you know, for the number of years now. And feel exactly the same way about you. So thank you for having me on. Yeah, man. So anybody out there that doesn't know about more of your story and where you're at, what you're up to today, you know, maybe give that 30,000 foot view. But then afterwards, I do want to dive deep into the humble beginnings. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll, I'll start back to when I was a kid. So I grew up as a kid with, uh, I'd say the best way to describe it, label after label after label placed upon me. I had a learning disability that I wasn't going to amount to much. I was low potential, severe ADHD. And, you know, since early on, you know, I was just placed in these boxes of where I was going to go directionally in life that didn't really align and resonate where in my heart that I wanted to be. But luckily I had awesome parents. I'd say my parents were my first mentors that kind of protected me and shielded me from some of those things. You know, grow up as a kid, didn't have a lot of friends. They say, you know, the average of the five people you surround yourself with the most. Well, I barely had five friends back then. So I I, I found something I did gravitate towards, which was the love of baseball. And I started playing the game of baseball. But the the only thing there was, uh, you know, a lot of people, some people are born with God-given talent and some people are not. And I was on the not side of things. I loved the game so much and I was really, really bad at it. Just didn't have that talent. And you know, I saw a lot of other kids out there that didn't work as hard as me and they just seemed to resonate with it. So I dove all the way into, you know, really the game of baseball. And that was my first experience with, you know, really work ethic. I mean, I think that was kind of the base foundation of my life, you know, starting out because in school, I had to work way harder than other kids just to get C's when some kids got A's just because I learned a little bit differently and people didn't understand how I learned. And then as I went into the game of baseball, It was the same thing. And, you know, luckily my parents, that's where they introduced me to my next mentor. And there's kind of a theme here. My parents were my first mentors. And my next mentor was my baseball coach, Coach Tillinghass. And I started up private baseball lessons to them and, you know, just working around the clock, trying to trying to master the game that I loved. And uh, one of the reasons I was also in baseball, too, was not only did I love it, but my parents tried to keep me busy. I had a brother in life that went down the wrong path. And really the wrong path. He's no longer with us, unfortunately. My dad really took it, you know, to heart. My mom did too. And they're the hardest working people I knew. They worked around the clock to afford things that they couldn't afford. You know, while we weren't, you know, dirt poor, we didn't have a ton when it came to money, but they always made it so we had more than what we needed. So I guess, yeah. you know, in a sense, my parents were my heroes growing up because they're the reason that I'm here today. And, you know, they so they invested. My dad was an entrepreneur. He had uh, two businesses, one putting up gutters, one snow plowing, and he'd work around the clock relentlessly. I remember working seven days a week, and he would literally operate on four hours a night of sleep just to keep paying the bills 
and paying for the things they couldn't afford. My mom had a gift basket business and did the same thing for us while caring for her parents at home. And you know, so he invested in me and I kept, you know, putting in the work, putting in the work, putting in the work. And I started to realize, you know, I think through my father just leading by example, just with this relentless work ethic, and then getting that in reinstilled in me from my baseball coach, teaching me principles like hard work beats talent when talent doesn't want to work hard. That frustration that I once had as a kid that, hey, everybody's better than me. Why, why, why? That I could close the gap by outworking everybody in the room. And then that I think was the beginning of my work ethic was just without a doubt, you know what? Great. Somebody could have more talent than me, but nobody is going to outwork me and I'll outwork them until my talent and my competency builds and eventually supersedes them, which is what I did in baseball and eventually went on to play college ball, which was my dream. I played high school ball in my senior year, hit 420, and then went on to play college baseball. That dream was short lived after an injury. So here was another you know, kind of a moment in life that life was changing. I had to figure something else out. And that was when I went out into the real world and had to figure out a career because I wanted to play, you know, obviously my dream was to play pro baseball that was disrupted. And my parents told me, Hey, one of two things, when you're under our roof, in order to stay under our roof, you got to have either in school or you have a job. And the first thing that I went to test was, you know, back to labels, right? And, you know, all my teachers in school were like, well, you're, you're not going to amount to much unless you work with your hands. So you need to take up a trade and not knocking trades. There's nothing wrong with trades. But I did that under this like label that they put me under, but it wasn't my passion. So I went out and did it, did, uh, you know, another year of school, got my certification in tool and die. Great trade, but it wasn't for me. So I had to figure something else out. And another person stepped into my life, which is a friend of mine. And I asked for help. I'm like, Hey, my parents told me, if I'm not in school. I got to get a job. Can you get me a job at Circuit City? And so we did. And I thought it was going to be a temporary thing. And it turned out to be the beginning and the trajectory of my professional career. Yeah. Uh, Cause I came in and when I came into Circuit City, very quickly, what I thought was me starting over was really just me evolving in everything that I built up in school and in baseball, like those principles around work ethic, I realized was the foundation that was going to explode my career even when I came into Circuit City. So very quickly, I just started hustling. I learned how to sell. Um, yet I had another mentor, my district manager that came in and took me under my wings and saw, you know, while everybody else was just hanging out, I was hungry to make money and, you know, make a career myself. And very quickly, within a short couple of years, became one of the youngest store managers in Circuit City history. I believe it was at the age of 21, was running a $24 million superstore, had this mentor wow. teaching me, you know, how to lead people. And I'll tell you, I was like, here I am a kid. And now I got to lead all these people, never done it before. So I started just, again, working around the clock, working around the clock with that. Worked my way up the ranks in uh, Circuit City, eventually became on an innovations team with corporate, helping the organization come up with new business concepts until kind of life happened again. But this time it was my health. So this really shook my world. I woke up one day and I started having back pain. The back pain got worse and worse and worse to the point it was becoming very debilitating. And then one day, I woke up and I couldn't walk. My yeah. ankles were swollen. My feet were swollen. I literally had crutches and I had to go out on disability to figure out what was going on. And they diagnosed me with some severe autoimmune conditions, ankylosing spondylitis. It can be a very debilitating. Most people go on long-term disability for life. And that's what my doctors told me. They're like, Dave, you might need to consider that. So here I was facing labels again, now at the hand of my doctors that they're casting the light. But I knew deep down... Like I just envisioned that I'm not going to be sitting on a couch, not providing for my wife. And then yeah. a goal of me deep down was to one day be my hero's hero because my parents really grown up, never did anything for themselves, never saved for retirement, never took vacations. And I knew that one day I needed to be the one. I needed to yeah. be the one somehow to change the trajectory of my family tree and be the one that my parents counted on later in life to do. So I get to about the six month mark. And then they tell me if, if you take longer than six months, we have to terminate your employment. We can't hold it any longer. So I forced myself to get back to work before I was ready health wise. During that six months, I got in the most difficult financial position of my life, not working, no money yeah. coming in, got behind in the mortgage. I get back to work, get in the flow of things. Then all of a sudden, 90 days later, like literally I'm feeling at this moment, I'm in the corner of a boxing ring, taking punch after punch after punch. And this time it was a customer walks in the building and this is how we found out uh, and said, I'm so sorry. I'm like, well, what do you mean? What are you sorry about? Well, didn't you see it was all over the news. Circuit City's going chapter 11, shutting all its doors. And then 
Sure enough, we saw, and then we had a conference call later that day, they're laying off 25,000 people. So here I am like destroyed because my yeah. food's gone. My health is not there. I'm broke. I'm like, what am I going to do? I'm like bawling on the phone, calling my wife. I'm like life. I don't know what is going on. And you know, that's when I went, I went back to my doctors and like, Hey, maybe it's a sign that you know, now's the time to go on disability. And I'm like, no. So what I did instead, after I left that doctor's office, did something a little bit crazy and wrote out a check for a million bucks. I'm a big visualization guy and I took it and I put it up and it wasn't about the money, but I wanted to look at it, something to look at and chase every single day. Yeah, And I knew that if I could cash that check one day, I could live a life on my own terms for my health, that I wouldn't be on my feet in retail 24 seven. I could provide the life my wife deserved. And then I could give back to my parents, be my hero's hero. The only problem was I'm broke. I'm so far away. My checking account is so far away from that million bucks. It's, it's uh, crazy. So I prayed on it. Ended up having a conversation with a friend of the family that was in the insurance business. And he seemed to be, he was young, doing really well. And it was my first experience and taste of passive income, right? We talk about passive income in real estate. There's passive income in insurance. And he had a book of business that he built. And once he built it, it paid him in his sleep. And I'm like, that sounds exactly what I need. Sign me up. And so again, people were telling me, Dave, don't do it. You're going to fail, especially with your health. I decided to instead pray on it, went all in, started getting my insurance license at night while Circuit City was folding, going on the business. The only problem was you needed capital, which I didn't have at the time to start the agency. So I prayed on it some more and you know, came in and you know, I really felt like it was God's design for me because when I came in, I noticed right 20 feet away from the Circuit City, I, I was closing down. There was an insurance brokerage that went out of business right across from a DMV and it was open. It was an insurance there privately. And I'm like thinking DMV, like that's a perfect recipe. And I'm like, that's where I'm going to open it up. Only problem is still didn't have the money. So I prayed on it some more. And then, you know, one day in a twist of fate, uh, liquidators came in and they said to me, well, Dave, all the open merchandise, the display merchandise, we need to blow that out for pennies in the dollar, whatever we can get. And it was almost as if like my prayers and, you know, so I I talk a lot about praying because I'm strong in my faith. And uh, i firmly believe to this day that you know a lot of times we don't realize when we pray, I think we expect God to just poof, fix things in our life. But I think, you know, and that does happen, miracles happen from time to time to the people that need them. But I think more times than not, the people that were capable of something, which I still was, um, he provides them in a form of opportunity. Yes. And immediately when he said that, it was almost as if it wasn't my words, it was God's words that came up my mouth. And I said, what if I made it easy and I just bought up all the inventory from every certain city store within four hours of here? They agreed. I took the last seven grand of my name out of my 401k, bought up about 70,000 worth of electronics, started bringing truck. Ho- I think I was so excited that I didn't tell my wife. And the way she found out, she came, she were, was working in retail too at uh, Victoria's Secret. She came home and she didn't have a living room anymore. And there's just like electronics everywhere. I took it all. I took power cables, remote controls. I had TVs, Bose systems. We didn't have a living room. It was literally stacked to the ceiling. She's like, what in the world is going on? And I was like, trust me. I got this. This is, uh, I got this baby. Hold uh, on. This is the answer. She's like, all right, I'll I'll trust you. So, you know, I began to do is actually set up a little mini circuit city in my basement, started to catalog it, put like racks from circuit city on the wall and then started to arbitrage it all on eBay in my spare time while I was closing down circuit city and getting my insurance license. Fast forward, I ended up selling that merchandise. I paid off all my debt, fixed my credit and ended up uh, raising the minimum capital I needed to start my first insurance agency. Let me get this together. So you went all in, you liquidated your 401k, you took the 7k, you put it into buying whatever you could in all the stores, four hours around your radius. You put it all in your house. Didn't tell your wife. Wife sees it and she's like, what the heck's going on? You said, I got you, baby. Hold on. And on your spare time, closing down these stores that you're still managing, you're hustling to start selling this stuff on eBay. Roughly, how much did you make on that investment? I made just enough, like pay off my bills, pay off my debt, and then raise the 25,000 minimum capital at the time. But the thing is, yeah. that 25,000, that was the bare minimum. Yeah. That was still only two months operating capital. By the time I had to put deposits down on a lease, yep. it required us to have two employees. So I hired two people at lost their job at Circuit City with me, brought them on. And all of a sudden, I'm seeing the bank account dwindle. And I remember to this day, like, you know, I was driving to save money in my beat up Impala with no AC, sleeping on my sister's floor that lived in New York City as I had to go down for training just to save from hotels every dime that I could. Yeah. And I came back and then the trainer goes, 
well, Dave, we're going to spend the first two weeks training and then you can go selling. And I'm like, no, we need to do it differently. I just don't have time. I don't have weeks. I had this urgency. It was acting like somebody was trying to take it away from me 24 hours a day because that was the reality. Time was ticking. And I'm like, I'm just going to figure it out. I'm going to sell. And then you just like show me what I'm doing as I'm going. So I remember the first customer to this day, it was our second day open, ran across the hall, grabbed them, Geraldo Hernandez. I ripped them on a line. And what should have taken like 20 to 30 minutes to sign up their insurance policies, it took us three and a half hours because I had no idea what I'm doing. I'm learning, signed up all his stuff. He stayed with me to the day I exited that first company. And I mean, that relentless pursuit was what set the tone, I would say, for my the employee on the left, the employee on the right. They saw what was most important. Yeah. And our very first month, we were actually leaders in the region. We're one of the top in the region. They're like, what is going on? And I had no idea what I was doing. Yeah, I knew nothing about insurance, but I had some good mentors prior. And I had a lot of good foundation from what was taught to me and instilled to me in at Circuit City and leading a big team there. And all sure. those things just seemed to, you know, seem to come out and instinctively just started getting it done. And then as we grew, started investing money into marketing, staying up late, late, late at night, just studying marketing, studying sales scripts and whatever it took, and then just hammered the phone. And when I wasn't hammering the phone, I was grabbing people out of the DMV line. Fast forward, we ended up growing that to one of the largest insurance agencies in the country with the carrier we were with, about 20 million in reoccurring revenue. And then we ended up you know, taking that, what that journey allowed me to do is eventually become my hero's hero. I bought my parents on. It's incredible, brother. It, it really is. And, on I, trips I, and uh, I was able to buy them a brand new Cadillac. And then <laughs> uh, probably the proudest moment just happened within this past couple of years. I bought them their brand new retirement home. And yeah. I, I was able to exit that business. There was people that were development plans with me to own their own agencies. I sold off to them. I'm still the bank getting paid by them now. Ended up going back in with partners. We scaled an insurance operation bigger than that even. We started a staffing and recruiting company. It was one of the top recruiting companies in the insurance space because I saw the need to serve them. Got a couple of software companies we got into, a CRM marketing software, and recently developed a AI automation software for hiring. Started taking our money and stacking it in the real estate. Like Bobby Castro says, stack and rack. I was like, I got to you know, start getting into real estate now. And just over the course of a short time, just started cranking out Airbnbs, built up an Airbnb portfolio, some commercial real estate. And now I'm kind of sitting where my heart's at. Yeah. Uh, a lot of our businesses, they were all, you know, we tried to impact as much as possible and make that impact our employees, but then make all our businesses for purpose when it comes to whether our recruiting company, we're helping veterans and at-risk youth, how to show up in an interview or giving back in some way, shape or form. But Anytime I was giving back and spending my time there, I just didn't feel like work and it felt very purposeful. And I knew eventually I wanted to spend most of my time there. And I started investing in mentors. I'm going to the masterminds, I'm going to the mentors. Uh, I met Cole Hatter, a good friend and mentor of mine that then led to being introduced to Tim Story, another great friend and mentor of mine, and now business partner. We were mentoring for three years and I sat down with him and um, had, I guess, what we we'll call a God idea now. I was thinking about and reflecting my journey, all my struggles as a kid, all the labels and how my brother, you know, I made it out, could have very well been down the path my brother did, my brother didn't. And then you think about the statistics that exist in our world where 1.3 million kids end up homeless in free yeah. America. Like yeah. you got over 30% of kids are being medicated in school as the go-to solution. Like they wanted to medicate me as a kid. And now it's even worse. Mental health crisis with our kids. And then over 90% of our kids graduate school unprepared, right? Mm -hmm. And then you see like this culture going on in society and in our school system where kids are just, I guess I'll call it going off the beaten path of where they should be foundationally value wise. And what I look at that is I was bullied as a kid in school. Now, like they didn't have these back then, social media, one post can root a kid's life. You got kids that are going out there and, uh, you got the jocks in school, the academically strong in school. You got the kids that are that are winning. But then the sure. kids like me when I was growing up, you know, it just took one post to destroy them and they had nobody. So what do they do when they have nobody? It's almost the same dichotomy when you look at some of these inner cities where kids go to gangs. Well, they don't have a dad. They don't have a father figure. So they look up to these gangs and they go down the wrong path because it's the only ones that embrace them. Well, now you're going in the you know, the wrong people in school that have the wrong ideology, I think, are the open arms for those kids. And then they're going down a less than purposeful path that I believe is going to lead them to have an almost life rather than an utmost life, as Tim likes to call it. And when I was yeah. talking to Tim, 
was like, imagine if there was a mastermind for kids. Imagine mm-hmm. you know, if we had mentors for kids. And he's like, that's an amazing idea. You need to do that. And then I started running 100 miles an hour ever since. And we put together the Fifth Degree Academy, where, we, where you know our, our goal is to try to touch as many hearts and minds of kids as possible, teaching them the five degrees of learning they don't teach enough in school: faith, family, freedom, finances, and fitness. And then that uh, that Guinness World Record that we were talking about. Yeah. Uh, that's where we're doing that. We're actually kicking off to our community. We figured, hey, what better way to do it than to give back at a massive scale in our community across the globe? Anybody that wants to join in virtually, having a financial literacy event with some of the best and the brightest mentors that I had to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars, same with you, to build relationships with that these kids didn't have access. And I'm like, I want to take those relationships and bring them access to these kids. Yes. So they can have the opportunity I didn't have when I was a kid that I got later on in life. So we could give them the foundation not to just go out and struggle and survive like most kids, but thrive in life. So we got Eric Thomas, top motivational speaker in the world, Tim Story, Cole Hatter, Gloria Mayfield Banks, Del Nil Delgado, Jim Quick, social media influencer, Jimmy Darts, Dave Meltzer. We have an incredible lineup of people that are going to be speaking in the hearts and minds of youth on August 18th and the 19th. And what's really cool about it is this is for not just kids, but it's kids, teens, families, parents, everybody of all walks of life. Sure. On the 19th at 3 p.m., Eric Thomas is going to kick it off and we're going to make history. Best and bigger than this event. And we set out to break a Guinness World Record around financial literacy. And we're going to break the record no matter what. But here's the thing. We want to make, break it on a big scale because we do it on a big scale and touch at least 10,000 kids. Like that's going to impact, change lives, save lives. So, you know, that's the only thing I'll, you know, I'll ask of anybody on this show is, you know, if you're out there, show up with your kids, bring people with you and let's make history together and change lives and learn a lot in the making. But I feel like where I'm at now is like where God made me to be, like all those trials and tribulations and then all the people that were in my life that were mentors that guided me through them. I, I look back now in this moment, back then I was like, God, why are you doing this to me? I keep, it's like one thing after another, I keep getting hit blow by blow, but I feel like he was forging me in the fire to build me to understand the suffering of other people. Anybody out there that doesn't have faith, it's, it just, it's eye opening to me because it's like, how many coincidences do you need until it really opens up your eyes of like, holy cow, there's got to be something bigger, better, right? Just in your situation, you had opportunities that came in front of you. You still had to work for it, right? And then you had just enough to be able to pay off and to get two months worth of, you know, a little bit of grace. That's still enough pressure to say like, hey, you don't got money in the bank that you can just like take an extra year or two. Time is of the essence. You realize that with your health situations and scares. So you took it full force. And I love where your heart's at always because you're so serving and you know you got emotional there for a second of the impact that you're leaving on. You, you are your hero. Like you're your hero's hero for the impact that you're doing in your family, taking care of your parents, but also like you blessed and you're still blessing people that you were working with underneath you in the insurance space. And now you're totally changing directions in the aspect of helping out more people and really what America needs right now, starting with the youth, because they're our future, right? Absolutely. And I think that's exactly I think what America needs right now is every one of us, me, you and everyone on the planet is just show up and insist on personal excellence in every area of life. Because whenever yes. does that, that sets the example of our next generation. That's the example to walk into. But when we don't do that, they get the opposite. And I think it's exactly what you said, you know, it was, it was pushing through and what did it, it was that pivotal moment that I probably never would have taken action. I was stayed in retail for a while, but it forced me into this place. And I think fear can stop us from our dreams sometimes, but in my case, the fear of like demise of being on disability and just dealing with that and potentially, you know, being a, an almost husband and not letting my parents down, that was far more fearful than just diving into the fire. And I think, you know, that just kind of leads me to, you know, I think fear can define two different ways is forget everything and run or face everything and rise. And and I think it's our duty in life to whenever we can rise to that occasion. That's luckily what I was Face you know, everything and, and rise. I love that. That's really good. I've never heard that. I'm going to yeah. steal that. That's good. No, absolutely. <laughs> and you went all in and that's what it takes. A lot of people don't realize that. But when you're you're at the crossroads, it's like you went all in. You took your last 7K that you had on you know, 401k, right? So you, you took that yeah. and you went all in. So I love that. So 
talk to us now a little bit more about what you have going on with this event. Like you said, you literally stuff that you and I have paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to be able to get into rooms like this and to learn from these mentors. You were able to gather up all these amazing human beings, put them in one area for this event. It's going to be Elevate experience event basically and it's on august 18th and 19th correct yeah it's like real super simple anybody can go there it's www.elevate.kids that's www.elevate.kids and they can click just put their information in there and that puts them in the guinness world record database and then all you got to do is show up on the 19th i would show up both days gonna be a lot of value but on the 19th 3 p.m eastern standard time is when eric thomas will kick us off Guinness World Record officiator will be there. And like literally we paid extra. So we invested, it's a free event, but we invested a lot of our money into this just to, to impact and spread the word. And we paid extra with Guinness so that every child, no matter how many kids or how many parents show up, will be able to walk away with an official Guinness certified certificate with their name on it, that they are a part of history that they can proudly go wow. back and tell their friends about or bring their friends and have them involved too. Yeah. That is so cool. I love that. So 3 p.m. on the 19th, obviously be there for the 18th and 19th, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. All you got to do is go to www.elevate.kids and and just make sure that you're registering your name and that you're being present there. If you're not present, if you're not there, if you're not putting your name and registering it, then you're not going to be counted in it. Obviously, this is a no-brainer. It's a free event that free for you uh, showing up, costing hundreds of thousands from Dave and the people and everybody else in place that's making this happen. Events aren't cheap by any stretch of imagination. And the time, energy, efforts, and the lack of sleep that he is taking away from his family to be able to really for a bigger mission, a bigger purpose to help out our future generation. I think it's incredible. So I'm super excited. I know I'll be there and we'll definitely be supporting. And yeah, man, anything else that you would leave for like the kids, for the parents and what to anticipate, what to expect? Yeah. I mean, so we're going to have, or it's going to be fun. There's going to be giveaways there. We're going to be giving away like scholarships to our program that's coming up. A lot of those are going to have prizes in between the speakers. Might have a surprise speaker or two, potentially a surprise performer come in. We're still waiting on confirmation, but as it is, Look at the website. It's freaking killer lineup. These people yes. are just amazing humans, you know, not just amazing speakers and everything else they do, but every one of them, it was crazy with this event. Like we asked a lot of different people and it was like all the right people say yes. So when you look yeah. at the ones that put their heart behind it, they have their heart into everything they do. They have their heart in the kids. They have their heart in the families. They're all impact oriented. So yep. it's literally, we have an army of the best of the best that could be speaking into the hearts and minds of families across America and the world that are going to be there. So I think it's going to be a pretty cool event. It's virtual, but we're going to be actually producing it out of a studio out of Chino, California. So we'll be broadcasting live and try to make it a great experience. Yeah, man, it's going to be incredible. I mean, it's literally millions of dollars worth of individuals and people and network influence. I mean, probably way higher than that. I'm talking probably closer to the billion. So it's it's really incredible to see just the caliber. It, it's going to be excellence in all areas right here. So I'm really impressed that you were able to get these people to be a part of something like this, get all these butts in the same room and the impact that's going to come from it. So we'll definitely be lifting you guys up in prayer. And I appreciate that. And, and yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, there's nothing to lose from this. It's nothing but incredible impact and education for for the kids that need it and the love, the experience, and really the impact that they need. So, dude, I couldn't, you there's know, anybody. Some, you know, we're on a real estate podcast. There's going to be some killer real estate folks there too. Talking yes. to these kids about real estate too. We got Cole Hatter that's going to be there. You know, a lot of these folks, they're in the real estate space too. Yep. So, I think it's going to be, you know, it's going to hit on like all walks of life from real estate to motivation to entrepreneurship to showing up in life, financial literacy. We're going to try to hit like a wide rig, kind of the whole gamut to, to the whole get, five F's uh, and all. I mean, it's everything. Five F's, faith, family, freedom, finances, and fitness. Gonna- Come on, baby. Come yeah. on. <laughs> I love it. Dude, I appreciate you so much for giving your time and, and your I energy. You and your time to me. Yeah, man. So you just gave almost an hour of your time for us. What could uh, you know me as well as the listeners do to give back to you? Honestly, just the biggest thing, the only thing I could ask is it's free. It's yeah. show up to the event and be there and bring as many people with you. Because here's the thing, again, we're going to break this record. But what will happen is if we break it on a big scale, there's a lot of people to show up. 
Yes. One, the most important thing of all, more lives are going to get impacted, more lives are going to touch. Yeah. But the bigger this is, that's going to really inspire these speakers that continue doing these sort of things. Yeah. That's going to allow us to build it on. So by getting a lot of people there to this event, that could impact a million kids in the future for what we're trying to do. Yeah. Uh, and that's really the whole, the whole game. Like we're seeing, again, we're seeing our kids go off the yellow brick road. Like I think the hot topic in the mirror right now, especially for parents, if you're a parent and you don't have to be a parent to show up, doesn't matter any age, yep. but it's education and they're concerned with their kid's future. And yep. I think, you know, the biggest thing that I could tell if you're a parent out there like me, my little guy's only two and a half yet, but I'm priming this by the time he's of age, like we got a foundation in a community. He's going to have Good. more than the five kids. He's going to have 500 kids, an army of people with the right mindset, right belief systems, the right people around him so he can go out and just conquer the world. And you know, I look at it, if we touch one kid out of thousands, like it just takes one. It just That's takes right. one to me. I was the one in my family. Look at Mother Teresa. She was one and she change the landscape of the world. There could be out in that audience just by inviting a kid. There could be a kid that was thinking about going down the wrong path and then they become the next Mother Teresa and they change the world. And I think when we look at it from that realm, there's a lot of levity to the situation that, that that's the reality. Sometimes words are more powerful than we know. And like every oh, single person that's going to show up on this event has a gift of like speaking words in a way that they embed into the hearts and minds of people in a lasting, meaningful, and impactful way. So I'll just say, show up, bring people with you, show up, and I'd be eternally grateful that anybody that did that. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, guys, there, there's really no excuses. What I'm going to ask from you, from our audience, is basically invite three people and tell them to do exactly the same thing and, and force them to come. Like, you know, drag their hands and make accountability purposes of making people show up and participate. But you get at least three and tell them to do exactly the same thing. And then that ripple effect will really make the impact that we need for our community and for our nation, our world. So it just takes one. So appreciate you guys all tuning in and participating and in advance uh, doing this for us. It means the world. Um, and Dave, man, I appreciate you greatly, man. I'm, I'm so impressed by you. First off, like you're frigging... Oh, uh, just, you, man. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're just so damn smart. You're such a gangster in so many ways and you outperform in, in all areas. So I'm just impressed. I'm thankful for our friendship and really excited to see what you do in the near future and, and you know, like what the future really holds for you. So yeah, man, we'll have to have you back on in the future. Hey, consider, but, that, consider that done, man. Appreciate yeah. it. But thank you, bro. I appreciate you. How can other people actually get a hold of you? Yeah, I mean, some of the best ways to uh, you know get a hold of me, you can reach me at David Williams at teamhire.com or David Williams at fifthdegree.com. That's our kids' mastermind. Or go on social. Um, it's just at DW2426 or at David Williams Verified. Love it. Awesome. Guys, if you want to get a hold of me, you can do so on Instagram. It's Brandon Elliott Investments. Otherwise, Facebook.com forward slash Brandon Elliott Investor. And then if you're looking to really understand the ins and outs of credit, really getting the banks to say yes more instead of no and getting denied for the little limits that you might have got. If you really want to learn how to get up to $500,000 every six months as 0% interest and be able to leverage that into real estate or other businesses, grow and scale your companies, getting a big stack of cards like this, then what you can do is... Check out creditcounselelite.com. That's www.creditcounselelite.com. We have a quick 10, 15 minute video on there that will explain more in detail all the ins and outs, answer some of your questions. And then you can book a one on one call with me or someone on our team for Credit Council Elite to go over your situation, understand how to get you to the next spot, and really just get a second opinion from us. So, with that being said, we'll see you guys on the next episode. If you haven't already hit that subscribe button, what are you waiting for? Leave that five-star review. Greatly appreciate all you guys. And until next time, God bless. Dave, appreciate you, bro. Thank you. I appreciate you. God bless everybody. This has been another episode of Ready, Set, Go! Real Estate Investing Podcast brought to you by Brandon Elliott. For more information, please visit BrandonElliottInvestments.com. Also, please don't forget to like, share, and leave a comment below. Thanks again for joining. Until next time, God bless.